Hello and welcome back to Bible Nuggets. I'm Andy Blaylock, joined by Brother Chris Hammond. Hello again. Hope you're all doing well. We hope this will be a blessing to you. A reminder, our theme verse is Matthew 4.4. 4. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Now today we're going to look at what I consider, at least, one of the most fascinating nuggets of truth. Ooh, a fascinating nugget. We haven't had one of those. <laughs> yes, a fascinating nugget of truth in all of the scripture. To, to find this nugget, um, we're going to go back and we're going to look at the story of the Samaritan woman found in, in John chapter 4. Now, I don't think we have time to read the entire story here. No. <laughs> it's a little lengthy, but yeah. uh, Brother Andy, could you maybe set up this, this yes. remarkable story for us? Absolutely. In the vein of chicken nuggets, as they say in Chick-fil-A, it'll be my pleasure. So I'll be happy to. <laughs> Jesus is walking with his disciples to Galilee, and he needs to go through Samaria to get there. On his way through Samaria, Jesus sits down at Jacob's well, which that's yeah. significant, and meets a fallen woman who is there to gather water. Jesus asks her if she could get him some water, and she seems a little startled by this. Well, why is she startled? That's a good question. <laughs> it's because she was a Samaritan, a half-breed, if you will. We don't say that. That's how they think it. And Jesus was a Jew who had just spoken to her. And you have to remember, this is important. Jews almost never, virtually mm -hmm. never speak right. to Samaritans. They perceive them as beneath them and wouldn't be dare to be seen talking to them. But here at the well, Jesus strikes up a conversation with the woman by simply asking for some water. When she asks how he as a Jew would ever speak to her, a Samaritan woman, Jesus mm. responds, I love this, by telling her that she should have asked water of him and he would have given her living water. After questioning him some more, she finally asks for this living water. Jesus tells her to go and call her husband. Mm -hmm. She tells her, him that she has no husband, to which Jesus responds that while that is true, that you currently have no husband, you have five husbands already. She now perceives him as something more than some ordinary man. Now she perceives him as a prophet. Let's pick up the story there yeah. in, in our reading. And let me read, uh, if I can, uh, John chapter 4, verses 20 through 24. And it's going to pick up with, first, the woman speaking. It mm. says, Our fathers worshipped in this mountain. Mm. And ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship ye know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews, but the hour cometh hmm. and now is, yeah. when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeketh such to mm. worship him. Mm. God is a spirit, mm. and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Yeah. Jesus was giving her a lesson on worship. That's right. And this is probably the most the most informative and really powerful passage in all of the scripture indicating how we are to worship God. Yeah, which is in spirit and in truth. Right. Notice he doesn't say in spirit or in truth. Yeah. <laughs> he yeah. says in spirit and yeah. in truth. It's not one or the other. And this is very important. I love this. Jesus does not want just the formality of religion. That's, That's right. what a lot of his people did. Mm -hmm. That you have you you have to worship him, but rather that you want to worship him. That's right. He wants your heart. Nothing else will do. But he also does not want you just to have zeal without knowledge. There's That's a right. lot of people like that. He wants you to worship him according to the Bible. He wants to, you to worship him, to want to worship him in spirit and with this, in truth. And, and that's right. And that's really, I think, where a whole lot of people um, miss the mark. They just think, it's just okay to worship yeah. God any way I yeah, want really to. Yeah. Yeah, God's just going to accept my worship because he should. Yeah. You know? Yep. And, and they'll put on rock and roll shows and they have these sensual dance uh -oh. routines uh -oh. and, <laughs> and they claim they're worshiping God. Yeah. But God wants you to worship according to his word, his truth, yeah. not our truth. Yeah, that's true. God wants both. You have to understand that. He wants you to worship him in spirit and in truth. And that's right. But don't miss what Jesus tells us mm. at the end of verse 23. Yeah, that the Father 
seeketh such to worship him. <laughs> to me, it's that's almost unimaginable. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's I, hard to comprehend. It, it really that, is. That the Father would look for our worship. Now think about this. God is omniscient. Yes. He's omnipotent and he's omnipresent. Mm -hmm. Now, are we omnipotent? <laughs> no. 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 <laughs> <laughs> maybe we could be considered not omnipotent, maybe punipotent. <laughs> yeah, we're yeah, just right. punipotent, yeah. all right? Yeah. And we're not omniscient. Yeah. You know, we are maybe tiny science. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Barely. <laughs> Barely. We're, <laughs> we're certainly not omnipresent. We're singularly present. Yeah. So why would God, who is so much greater than us, yeah. want to have our worship? And you know, God doesn't need our worship either. No, he doesn't. But he wants it and he allows it. But not only does God allow our worship, think about this, he's actually yeah. seeking it. Yeah. God wants us to worship him. Amen. And you know, that is that alone is amazing. It is. You know, if we're going to please God, we are going to worship him in spirit and in truth, knowing that God is actually seeking our worship. Right. Well, one, one last thing for our Bible nugget today. We said that we have to worship God in spirit and in truth. Well, Jesus reveals to the Samaritan woman yeah. one of the most important truths possible. Mm -hmm. And without this truth, it's really impossible to worship and please God. Yeah, what truth is that? Well, let's, let's read it in, in verses 25 and 26. It says, The woman saith unto him, I know that Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things. Jesus saith unto her, I know that speak unto thee, am he. Mm. Jesus tells us very, very plainly <laughs> right yeah. here that he is the Christ. Yeah, that's right. He is the Christ, and you don't come, you don't go to God through anyone else. You don't worship God except through him. It reminds me of I am the way, the truth, and life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Right. You've and got to come, come through Christ. You have to. And we're thankful for that. And we're thankful for you. Thank you for joining us. We hope this was a blessing, and we will see you next time. God bless.